Hello, everybody. My name is Teresa Lopez. I am the administrator for the Arizona Leafy Greens Food Safety Committee. They oversee the Arizona Leafy Greens Marketing Agreement, which is also known as Arizona LGMA. Today, I'm going to give a quick program overview um, and talk a little bit more about food safety uh, in Arizona. So first, I want to give a little bit of background on fresh produce production in Arizona. So for the 2019-2020 season, um, we had 3.7 billion pounds of uh, fresh produce produced in Arizona. Leafy greens make up 70% of that production. Um, that's why I'm here to talk to you a little bit more about the LGMA program um, and, and just what we do and, and why we do it. So I also wanted to provide you a little bit of back, a little bit of background about fresh produce uh, production and the state programs that oversee that, that production. So at the Arizona Department of Agriculture, we have the Citrus Fruit and Vegetable Division, uh, which has several programs uh, within it. First of which is the Citrus Fruit and Vegetable Standardization Program, uh, which is overseen by a nine member industry council uh, made, up, made up of different uh, specialty crop growers um, throughout Arizona. Uh, we did recently add a seat to incorporate some of the produce safety rule um, requirements around coolers um, and holders. Uh, so we do have a seat out of Nogales um, that is now making up um, representation for, for the produce safety rule. Uh, that standardization program also does licensing. Uh, they um, collect assessment reporting um, to develop commodity reporting for statistical data, um, which they use for things like research funding, um, also for crop applications, um, just understanding a little bit more about uh, production in Arizona overall. Additionally, we have our USDA um, uh, federal inspection program. Um, this is a federal state inspection program. Um, so we have state employees doing federal work. Uh, there is a terminal market and a shipping points in Nogales, Phoenix, and Yuma. Uh, the USDA program also oversees auditing services for the GIPGAP, Harmonized, LGMA, and Tomato Protocol audits. The CFV um, division also administers the Arizona Leafy Greens Food Safety Committee, which is the role that I play um, within the division. Um, the Arizona LGMA was established in 2007 after the uh, 2006 spinach E. coli <clears throat> 0157H7 outbreak. Um, our newest program within the citrus fruit and vegetable division, um, and you'll be hearing more about that today from Norman Barnett, is the uh, Arizona Produce Safety Rule Program, um, which is the implementation of uh, the FISMA Produce Safety Rule. So we provide training and outreach for that program and then just recently started regulatory compliance and enforcement within that program. And then before I give you uh, background on the LGMA program, I did want to address um, why the LGMA program is so important um, with foodborne illnesses continuing um, around leafy greens um, and the ability to um, detect and identify um, outbreak and outbreak strains um, through whole genome sequencing, looking at the persistence of strains um, tied to multiple outbreaks um, between California and Arizona. Additionally, talking about traceability um, being an, an issue when we do get into identifying and detecting these outbreaks, you know, there's some weak links in um, what people consume and the products that they're consuming. Um, there's also some restraints around investigational resources um, within the federal government, also within states. Um, there's issues within traceability around the last mile of traceback. So once it, uh, the product does get through processing and into retail, the ability to then trace those products. Um, and then if they, they have made somebody sick, getting them traced back to um, the, the actual grower or uh, shipper that distributed that product. Additionally, FDA's environmental assessments 
um, during outbreaks don't necessarily link to that root cause. Um, there are many things being done um, on top of what LGMA does, um, including um, a longitudinal study that the FDA is working on uh, with the Arizona industry, along with the uh, Wilton Mohawk Irrigation District um, and the University of Arizona. This longitudinal study is helping to um, identify potential environmental issues that could be causing this and looking at those uh, persisting strains um, and also looking to test some of the best um, practices for food safety. When we talk about some of the programs um, that are going on around food safety outside of LGMA, you have uh, FDA, which has uh, come out with the Food Safety Modernization Act, which is the produce safety rule. Um, again, Arizona began inspection in November of 2019. Um, and so we've conducted just over 75 uh, inspections here in Arizona. Uh, additionally, FDA has implemented surveillance sampling programs, um, specifically at Yuma, Yuma coolers um, after the 2018 uh, e. coli outbreak in Romaine. Uh, they have done samplings uh, at the coolers in the Yuma area in 2018, 19, um, and then in 2020, where they um, are looking at post-harvest product. Um, they have not found any positive um, samples um, in any of the sampling that they have done to date. Additionally, FDA has put out a 2020 Leafy Greens STAC action plan um, that talks about um, additional ways that FDA can um, increase, increase food safety around leafy greens, also work with industry and um, work with the public um, around different plans and, and, and implementation of different practices to help strengthen our, our food safety system. Additionally, um, Frank Giannis with the FDA has come out with the new era of food safety, um, which is also another um, action-based plan around developing a stronger food safety system in the United States. So now to talk about the Arizona um, LGMA program and the LGMA programs as a whole. Um, so this is a science-based food safety system uh, meant to protect public health. Um, we work on continuously improving the program, um, also work toward developing a culture of food safety throughout industry, um, not only within our, our membership. So the LGMA programs were established in 2007, like I'd said before, in both Arizona and California. In Arizona, the program is administered, administered by the Arizona Department of Agriculture. And um, again, we go through rigorous science-based food safety um, steps uh, to implement this program. And um, it is verified through um, USDA licensed auditors. It is a voluntary sign-up to be a member of this program, uh, but it does require uh, mandatory compliance with the best um, food safety practices. Additionally, this program is uh, completely industry funded. Again, to talk a little bit more about leafy greens in Arizona, um, our members are committed to producing leafy greens in the safest manner possible. Um, the LGMA members represent 99% of leafy greens and lettuce produced in Arizona and California. And in Arizona, 85% of all leafy greens grown, harvested, and shipped between November and March um, are likely coming from the Arizona area. Um, November is actually uh, the kickoff to Arizona's harvest of leafy greens, and that is Arizona Leafy Greens Month. Uh, we do get a proclamation from uh, the Arizona governor annually uh, for, for that month recognition. Uh, the, the economic impact also is pretty huge in Arizona. Um, the leafy greens industry accounts for $2 billion in the way of jobs and revenue. So a little bit of background too on the leadership of the Arizona LGMA. 
we have a food safety committee, which is made up of five signatory company members, uh, three that represent Yuma County, two from any other leafy greens producing area in the state. Um, and then we also have a technical subcommittee that reviews and recommends changes to our best practices. And then the communication subcommittee, um, which deals with all of our crisis communication, public relations, and social media outreach. Also on our website, you are able to find our certified members, so our shipper member companies. Um, and on here, we also do list our pending members and anyone that has been decertified or is currently decertified from the program. Uh, as I said before, LGMA members are shippers or handlers of leafy greens. Um, our members are required to follow uh, the science-based food safety practices, and they're all audited by our USDA auditors. Um, currently, this is the only way to really implement change in how leafy greens are farmed, and also uh, the best practices that are completed on farm. So on our right-hand side here, you can see when we talk about shipper or handler base, um, our shippers um, are the ones that are marketing that product and um, putting it um, out to retail. And they oversee the growers, the harvesters, sanitation companies, water suppliers, things of that nature, and all of the food safety practices um, that go into the whole production um, and harvest of leafy greens. Um, and so they're responsible for that, that audit ultimately. So a little bit more about the LGMA's food safety practices. So in both California and Arizona, we use what is called the Commodity Specific Food Safety Guidelines for the production and harvest of lettuce and leafy greens, uh, which we call our metrics. Um, and they cover a wide variety of <clears throat> Uh, field and harvest practices. So we have a general requirement section that covers traceback and grower information. Uh, we have records requirements, also personnel qualifications and training. Um, we do um, verify environmental assessments. So there is a requirement for pre-season, pre-harvest, and daily harvest assessments to be done out in the field. Um, additionally, we cover water use, uh, which we'll go into a little bit more um, later in the presentation. Also soil amendments, non-synthetic crop treatments, um, and then the overall field sanitation, which covers harvesting equipment, packing materials, buildings, um, any field or harvest personnel, um, flooding, the actual production location, animal hazards and animal intrusion, um, adjacent land use, and then also the transportation from uh, the field to the cooler. on to the development of leafy greens food safety practices. The uh, LGMA programs undergo an annual review of these best practices looking for any new science or uh, merging just best practices, field best practices. Um, so there are a couple differences between the Arizona and California metrics document, but for the most part we are sister programs. Um, some of those differences are things like language, um, our statutory Language in Arizona is shipper, in California it's called a handler. Um, in Arizona we use producer, in California we use grower. Um, so, we, so you'll see that used kind of interchangeably throughout the, the presentation, uh, along with uh, a little bit of a difference within those documents. Um, California also covers cadmium and uh, testing of cadmium, but it is a coastal issue. It is not a desert growing region uh, issue, so we do not cover that in our metrics. Um, and then this year in our water use changes, um, there are some nuances for Arizona around crop protection and fertigation products um, used in, uh, with surface water um, because more surface water is used here um, in the desert um, than uh, up in California. Additionally, we have our subcommittees, which I reviewed a little bit during uh, the leadership slide. 
And those subcommittees uh, go through recommended changes, um, come up with um, uh, suggestions. Um, they run that through uh, the Western Growers metrics review process, which are um, an open um, change recommendation site um, where they hold webinars once they do receive final submission of uh, proposed changes. And then once all of those are compiled and gone through webinars, um, they are actually given back to the Arizona and California technical subcommittees um, for a final review and recommendation to our food safety committee. Additionally, as a part of uh, the development of our best food safety practices, we do look at new science. Uh, we also look at gaps in science. Um, since 2007, the Arizona LGMA has funded over uh, $500,000 to the University of Arizona for food safety research. Um, and so we use some of that research to guide these best food practice changes. Um, additionally, in response to the April 2018 outbreak, uh, we did facilitate the Leafy Greens Food Safety Task Force, which brought together over 130 uh, members of industry uh, there was uh, academia, there was um, FDA members, USDA members, um, industries, uh, shippers, growers, harvesters that all participated in looking at potential causes for that outbreak um, and then did provide um, recommendation to the metrics uh, for the 2018-2019 season. In 2019, the LGMA implemented um, topic specific subcommittees that looked at water and field sanitation. Uh, these subcommittees uh, have members of both the Arizona Technical Subcommittee and the California Technical Subcommittee um, to help refine some of the metrics as a whole. Um, and we did implement new changes um, that will be audited this season um, that starts in November um, with those new water and field sanitation changes. And then this year, we also added additional subcommittees um, to help look at um, and review soil amendments um, and adjacent land use and CAFOs. Um, some of this um, need is coming out of FDA's environmental assessments during investigations in California um, that did look at uh, adjacent land use and uh, the grazing of cattle near leafy greens fields. So as I said before, um, in, uh, recently the Arizona LGMA uh, made some significant changes to our water metrics um, and the way that we um, look at water. So prior to these changes, um, the LGMA program uh, did require water testing. We've always required water testing, um, but the old standard considered all water the same. Um, they, the acceptance uh, criteria was based on US EPA standards for recreational water. Um, it did not uh, effectively address storage and delivery of water, um, and it did uh, only rely on a single indicator, uh, indicator organism in that testing. And so now our updated water metrics um, were the new approach. Uh, we have the growers categorizing their water system. So looking at it um, between a type A and a type, type B system. Type A would be things like municipal or well water. Uh, type B system would be surface water. And then we have them um, do risk assessments for the fitness of use. Um, so if that water is gonna be used 21 days prior to harvest or 21 days um, uh, before that harvest window, um, we do look at if it's gonna to touch the edible portion of the crop um, and just what, what that use is gonna be used for um, and then what the acceptance criteria um, is then going to be for that water. We do have um, more prescriptive measures around evaluating that source, storage and delivery system, um, and encouraging a fix and find approach. So trying to get to the root cause 
uh, potential um, contamination of that water. Um, also looking at doing hazard analysis around, around that water systems. Um, and we do now look at using um, tiered indicators for um, water use in these new metrics. So the implementation of these food safety practices, um, like I said before, these are mandatory. Um, that these are followed. So once we um, establish the new best practices within our metrics document, um, we do develop a checklist um, for those changes. And we go through that checklist with the USDA auditors. Um, we work with the Arizona Department of Agriculture and also the California Department of Food and Agriculture, along with the USDA um, to calibrate the audit teams. Um, also, um, working with our, our compliance team as well um, and look at metrics interpretation. So when um, the auditors are out in the field, um, everybody is um, interpreting uh, the metrics the same. Additionally, we do stakeholder outreach and training of these metrics. Um, in Arizona, we do also support um, trainings on foundational principles um, to help with that successful implementation. So we do spe special topic um, trainings where we talk about um, things like documentation, we talk about um, more specific areas around um, things for like the water, we did total coliforms or just different water treatment parameters, um, water treatment in general, um, just depending on what the metrics change is, we will hold special topics that kind of give baseline information about, um, about those principles. Additionally, we have our food safety training kit and our metrics 101, which I'll go into in just a little bit, um, that provides some of that, again, foundational um, principle around those changes. Um, both the California and Arizona provide outreach that are specific to the metrics to talk about those individual changes that we've made. Um, and more recently, we've started working on emphasizing root cause analysis in our trainings um, with some of these new water metrics changes that we have completed. As I said before, we do have um, some additional uh, training resources. So we have a web-based training, um, which is called Metrics 101. We use a training management system for this. And so for all of the topics in the metrics, um, you can go in, log in, set up a profile, and learn um, about all of those different topics. You can kind of log in and log out and take it at your own pace. Um, it does include all of the FISMA components um, because the Arizona LGMA and California LGMA actually aligned uh, with the FISMA uh, produce safety rule back in 2017. Um, so those are included uh, within this. Um, the Metrics 101 is meant to help establish that culture of food safety at all levels within a company. So uh, we do really encourage a lot of the management um, of the Leafy Greens workers to take this uh, training so that they understand what um, they are responsible for out in the field. So it's just another tool that we do have. Um, additionally, in Arizona, we have what is called the Arizona Leafy Greens Food Safety Training Kit. Um, this is a train the trainer based materials. Um, so they're standardized materials that cover just basic food safety practices. Uh, they talk about outbreaks and contaminants. They talk about personal hygiene and hand washing, also um, cross contamination in the field. Um, and then we have a more extensive um, tool for environmental risk assessments that cover the uh, pre harvest and daily harvest assessments that are done out in the field. All of these materials are in English and in Spanish. Um, we do provide um, all of the electronic um, copies of these trainings for free um, to Arizona producers and to pretty much anyone that's interested in, in having these. Um, uh, they do, if you buy the physical, we do also sell the physical uh, materials as well, which include uh, PowerPoints, videos, um, workbooks that have case studies, uh, there's posters that come in electronic format for things that you can, you know, put, hang around your facility, things like hand washing, 
um, also notifications around trash. Um, there are tailgate flip charts uh, that can be used out in the fields. Um, and then we have competency tests um, put in there as well. So once we complete the training on the best food safety practices, um, we do the verification component um, of the program. Uh, again, we use um, Arizona uh, and California Department of Ag to do those audits using their USDA certified auditors. Um, the auditors conduct both scheduled audits and unannounced audits. Um, the unannounced audits are just field observations. They go out during harvest um, um, and go through and watch the harvest crews, uh, making sure that they're in compliance with the, the program as well. In California, they conduct five to six audits per year. Uh, in Arizona, since we have a shorter season between November and March, uh, we conduct three audits per season. Two of those are scheduled and one are unannounced. Um, and that is on each of the shipper members. And then we try and hit at least uh, every grower at least once during the season. And these audits actually provide um, really good information about some of the changes that we can be making, um, also about practices and ways for us to help improve those practices. Um, and, and so this data that we receive in these audits and through this verification process is, is just really great for the program. And I'm actually going to show you a little bit more um, around our audit findings for our first year of water treatment. Um, so our growers in Arizona did a stellar job um, and worked really hard to implement um, all of these new changes around um, water use and water treatment in Arizona. We had a really successful season. Um, we did see quite a few deviations, though, around things like record keeping and documentation, which is pretty common when we make any kind of change within the audit, is just getting um, everybody up to date and on board. The system is huge when you talk about all of the growers, all of the harvesting companies and employees, um, and just getting the documentation, you know, figured out and, and handled and who's doing what and, you know, what gets written down um, is, is quite an undertaking. Um, but I think that we've done a, a pretty good job of getting that done as well. Um, but like I said, we do get a, a picture of what that looks like through these verification audits. So. So this is just kind of a breakdown of deviations and where we saw things missing. Again, most of this all leads back to um, just that documentation of, of the process and who's doing what. So for compliance with um, these audits, um, once that verification is done, uh, we look at compliance levels. Uh, we do require 100% compliance for the program. Um, each audit um, is reviewed, and if there are uh, issues or infractions or assigned deviation levels, um, we have four different deviation levels um, ranging in severity. So you have a minor infraction, which um, can be fixed right there uh, in the field, just a minor um, issue. Say there's a piece of trash in the field, they can pick it up, throw it away. Um, then minor deviations, um, which require corrective action within five days. So once they're noted on the report um, and they receive their, um, their compliance report back, they have five days to submit a corrective action plan. Um, for major deviations, these are more severe, have the potential to cause um, uh, an issue in the field. These do require corrective action as well. And then a follow-up audit within three days um, of those corrective actions. And then we have flagrant violations, which um, could severely impact um, foodborne outbreaks um, or could lead to foodborne outbreaks. Um, these violations can result in decertification from the program. Um, and um, again, that they would be listed on our uh, website as decertified uh, if they do uh, get that flagrant violation within the program so that folks know that they're not in compliance with the program at the moment. Um, again, corrective actions are required for all deviations. Um, so that is where we, we require that 100% compliance. 
Um, and then again, down to cert certification, if you look to the right, you can see these two um, logos. So you have the AZ LGMA certified logo and the, Cal the CDFA certified um, logo. So these are on the bills of lading for all of our member companies, um, showing their buyers that uh, they are currently members and in compliance with the LGMA program. So that is the broad overview of uh, the Leafy Greens program, just talking about how we um, implement and develop our best practices, then how we verify um, and then train those. Um, also looking at that compliance and enforcement component. And I appreciate your time today. My name again, Teresa Lopez, and I am the administrator for uh, the Arizona Leafy Greens Food Safety Committee. Here's my contact information. Uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you.